Greetings my fellow mortals and a very warm welcome to you all. If you're new to the channel, where have you been? So today we have a neglected Cartier Santos which needs a bit of our help. I ended up inadvertently abusing this piece further by melting things. Talk about kicking a Cartier when it's down. This piece has a closed case with no case back and access to the movement is through the top. The bezel is secured using 8 screws and stud nuts but most of these are missing and very hard to come by hence why the watch was probably neglected and not repaired. So today we'll make some screws and studs and get this little wannabe royal oak back on its feet and on someone's wrist. Look at all these missing screws. This particular piece is known as the Cartier Santos Rond octagonal from the 90s with an automatic movement which is currently not functioning so we will also address that as well as do a full case and bracelet restoration. Cartier watches may be regarded by many as just a jewellery slash fashion brand when it comes to timepieces but Cartier will argue otherwise and that argument is often based on one of the most obvious and important innovations in horology who invented the wristwatch? Other brands may lay claim to this invention, but the most circulated story is relating to a man named Santos. Alberto Santos Dumont was a Brazilian pilot, an aviator in the early 1900s, when aviation itself was in its infancy. The first Wright Brothers flight was in 1903, and in 1904, Alberto Santos complained to his friend Louis Cartier about the impracticality of using a pocket watch whilst flying. Louis Cartier heard his friend's plea and came up with the wristwatch. And the wrist is history. And the wrist is his... No? Oh, forget it then. Okay, so these pins for the bracelet will be jammed in. I've tried to hammer them out. So what I'll do, I'll just remove the movement out and put the whole thing in the wash first and see if that loosens it all up there's only one stud left here and we have one two three four five five screws so and the reason why i decided to do this was because these missing studs and screws has given me an opportunity to make some That's probably the reason why some of this stuff is missing. They're either jammed up or rusted up. As you can see, there's one that's broken. And the rest of them seem to be in there pretty stiff. Maybe previously an attempt was made to remove this bezel and the screws and the studs didn't come out properly. So what I'm gonna do is make seven of these and since we have one two three four screws this one's no use we'll make another four nothing too complicated so i'll show you guys how to remove a stem where you don't have any access to the back for a split stem this is similar to a a cannon pinion remover behind the crown and you just yank it out like that. Here you can see the split stem. And there you go. Now one of the most iconic design features of Cartier watches is this sapphire cabochon. But on this one you can see it's smashed up. I'll put my stone setting skills to work. And see if we can replace that cabochon. Okay so let's get this bezel. And this case in the wash. To see if we can loosen up these screws. And these bracelet pins here and I've ended up damaging all these look at that look at the state of that look at that another one bent and it still won't come out and I've broken so many of them so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn that down Make it a bit stiff. Hey, hey, look at that. What is it's that? Crooked as a politician. What I'm going to do now is apply a bit of heat. Ooh. 
Look at that. It's melted my... <laughs> Look at that. I forgot to cool it down. It's melted my holder. <laughs> Look what I've done. <gasps> oh no. How do we recover from this? <laughs> oh my god. But it's coming out. Can you see? Well, hey. A little bit of heat makes the tree come out in the most delightful way. Well, hey! Now the tube's stuck inside. But at least the pin's out. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. So there's the tube. And there's the pin. Probably why Cartier have changed the system now. Because that was hard. And look at the state of the watch. That's a total write-off now. A bit of a mare. I made steel and toast. Second one on budge. So I'm going to try and drill it out. Just going to drill the two ends of the bars and then the tube is up to here should slide out after many a broken drill bit we have finally look at all those drill bits that are broken inside finally managed to get it all off <laughs> look at the state of that oh, Cartier sort yourself out So as you guys have seen previously, my main lathe is still broken and I haven't got around to getting it welded. So today I'll be using this crusty old thing, which I've been meaning to restore as it's very stiff and slow in its current state. Do you guys want to see a lathe restoration video? Let me know in the comments. Needs a bit of honing. Will you solve this mild steel stock that I have? Original stud is about 1.9 mil thick and our stock piece is about 2 mil so we need to reduce the stock first. I have my little depth gauge here. A little bit more. So, we'll just be using this tap here. Oh, I know you guys love looking at my monkey hands. There you go. Please, Governor, I've been up the chimneys all day. Now I've got to pick a pocket.
so this is the original one that came out the watch as you can see there's no special finishing or anything on it these are the ones i made uh, and i tried to cut red on this one i don't have a, a milling attachment on my lathe so i did this with the saw and you can see i've made a bit of a dog's dinner out of that one so what i'm going to do is i've made a little jig do you remember these holes so i'll put one of these little fellas in there and it sits just below the surface so my saw blade can fit in there as a guide best invention since sliced bread oh yeah so that's pretty centered but it needs a bit more depth probably so i can easily now put this into a little vise and finish it off so i've got it in the vise the vise within the vise something like that maybe so that's the original screw Okay, so we've got the stock down to about 1.5, which is going to be the size of our screw head. I am a bit rubbish when it comes to parting. Parting is such sweet sorrow. Don't laugh if it all falls apart. That's the original one from Cartier. Close enough, I think. What do you guys reckon? Something. Be dangerous. I'm old. You're old, you still need a booster seat, what do you mean? No, I could sit on my own. Come on then. <laughs> Some brown sugar. Your mom's good. Really? That's my cup of coffee. Chosen, chosen, chosen. Delicious. These all just need this is a finishing with a bit of a polish. Yeah. We've hardened all that mild steel. So I've put that broken screw in so I can put that 
into the collet onto the headstock and we'll get Mr. Trouble to do some polishing. Yeah? Yeah. Go. Let's see it. And do the face as well. So for a very small movement, it has an automatic complication. The lovely snailing on the rotor and some perlage I can see just beneath that. Feels a bit groggy, but we'll sort all that out during the service. This doesn't seem to be moving at all. So this is in fact an ETA 2671X1 Is that 9 or is that 11? Somebody please let me know I'm not very good at Roman numerals I think it's 11 There's the click I'm trying to do this really quick today. Where's it gone? I'll find it in a minute. There's a blasted screw disappeared too. Mm, let's take off the barrel bridge. Oh my god, are you serious? Are you serious, bro? Tonight is gonna bro. Some people say I can't sing, but in my mind's eye I can. What is this? Looks like a hacking feature of some sort. Now that is the flimsiest little thing I've seen. Take off the pallet cock. Now let's check the pallet pivots. Seem to be okay. Something wasn't right somewhere. Let's go on the other side. I see some guys hold their screwdrivers like this with their tweezers. The, the real professional me. I suppose it helps the screwdriver from slipping. So that's what you call the speed dismantle. Ten minutes. Right now I gotta go somewhere to see a man about a dog.
seems very well behaved that is very gunky though very gunky nice nasty that's the automatic works just dismantle that metal hasn't actually gone anywhere and it's been displaced with the correct temperature and speed I could try and reposition that metal back to where it belongs with a few rubs managed to push most of it down without losing too much these screws are just for decoration so they don't come out but I want to polish these screws up and then I want to brush the rest of it. things on the edges well, I don't know what the original finish was supposed to be like on this bezel so I'm just gonna get rid of the scratches and then brush it and I think there's a small little bevel around the edge which I'll try do on the lapping machine So this is what we have after the first cut, getting rid of all the big scratches and so that we can see what we're doing next. Shiny, shiny. So we got rid of all those marks that were around the edges, polished around the outside and brushed in the middle. Nice. So as you can see, some of these little buggers are just in the wrong place. Right on that angle there where I've put that bevel, as you can see. And if I try and remove them, I'll end up removing a lot of the bezel. So. Some of them will just have to stay in. You can see the bevel I've put around the edge. Good. Same with here. A little bevel just on the edge there. 
And again with the clasp, I've put a brush finish, but I've tried to keep the logo slightly mirrored to the underside. And there's the other one. And we've kept all those screws mirrored. So some of the original screws that I'll be reusing, I've polished them as much as I could. But as you can see, there are a few small nicks still on them. And if I try and take them down any further, then I'll end up with hardly any screw head. And then the screw head will just sit quite below in the bezel. So I've also left some of the original screws with some of the dinks and marks still on them. Keeps the watch on Easter, I suppose. There's a big gash on that crown. So I'm going to try and sort out that cabochon. But first of all, I need to smash the old one out. And there's no fancy way of doing this, I suppose, but just to smash it out. supposed to be just a rub round setting so what I'll do is I'll open it up a little bit and then put the stone in and then rub around it. I did do a stone setting course many moons ago just so that I can fix up people's frosted watches. Look at my eye stop watch man. So any of you stone setters out there probably see me using the wrong tools. Please don't scream at me. So I've got these little sapphires, but as you can see, the back is not flat. Hardly any room in there. So I'm going to have to try and shape the back of that and see if I can get it in. Mmm, a bit of scented candles. Mm. I haven't got any dopstick wax. I used a bit of shellac. That came off. So I mounted it in a small vise. As you can see, I've taken some of the tail off it. So I just need to flatten it out a bit more. So I've taken it all the way up to the girdle basically. It's a bit rough. And we'll just try and smoothen that out a little bit. Looks like a bit of a mess. I'm giving it a little polish. Not over the moon with this to be honest, but I'll probably end up ordering a another crown. Just to show you guys that it can be done. I think I just need to stop picking fights that I can't win. Today we are using a size three. So a lot of you have asked for a Q&A session during the assembly process after I mentioned it in the Amiga Deville video. So I'll try and answer some of the most popular repeated questions from the comments section. One of the most asked questions is what are jewels? I've explained this previously, but these are just synthetic rubies which act as a smooth bearing to minimize wear to the pivots. They also act as small oil wells for the lubrication. Metal grinding against metal causes a lot of wear, which reduces accuracy, so these jewels eradicate that problem. Another popular question is, why do I sometimes adjust the hands to 10 past 10, just like the brands do in their marketing pictures? Well, the brand logo is usually just below 12 o'clock, so setting the hands at 10 past 10 allows the logo to be visible without the hands covering it up. A lot of you have been asking whether I take on subscribers' jobs. Sadly, I physically can't take on any private work at the moment, guys. So I'm really sorry to all of you who have been trying to reach out for service quotes. 
Do I sell any of the restorations that are featured? Well, most belong to clients and the rest get sold locally. Where is my accent from? I'm from a city called Birmingham in the UK, so I guess you can call it a Brummie accent, which I try to soften down, otherwise Google breaks down trying to auto-add subtitles. This hacking lever doesn't look right. I don't know why it's bent like that, but I'm pretty sure it's not supposed to be like that. That's what it's supposed to look like. But I'll just flatten it out and see. So this stop lever is supposed to stop the balance when the watch is put into hand setting mode and is the main reason why the balance was jammed up. A bit better. So back to the Q&A. What is my favourite brand? I don't really have a favourite brand, but my first ever Swiss watch was gifted to me back in the late 90s and it was a Tag Heuer Curium, which I wore for 20 years and I've always worn a Tag as an everyday beater as I never take it off during showers or sleeping or even if I'm under a car doing some DIY and I don't mind getting it beaten up. For a more dressy occasion, I may wear a JLC Reverso or a Panerai. Enough of me and I'm laying. Some of you guys reckon I can't sing. I wonder what gave you that idea. One of these days, I just have to get my guitar out. I'll prove you all right. <laughs> I don't juice on there. No. <gasps> now you lot in the back pay attention <laughs> so you can see that little hacking lever so we want to make sure that that little lever sits in between our sliding pinion look at that cool twisting stem Now, let's do a bit of oiling, bit of D5. Going to 10, bit of D5. Computer says D5. That is a very short post. So back to the point about what is my favorite brand. Now I'm always very cautious about telling you guys what I like or what I use as I don't want to wrongly influence anyone. So let me ask you a question now. I've been bombarded recently with sponsorship deals for all sorts of products and services from VPNs to hair loss products to square faces and round places. And I've turned around and said, jog on, not interested. But then they start throwing dollar signs at you and all I see is, Ooh, new dial printing machine. Ooh, new CNC setup. Ooh, new disobedience couch. So I wanted to ask you guys what your feelings are about sponsorships. If I see something that may be beneficial to my viewers, then I was thinking of giving it a try. But as compensation for the inconvenience, I would upload two videos at the same time for you guys. Most people skip through them anyway, don't they? I do. Let me know how you guys feel about that. Two videos at the same time for the price of a minute inconvenience. Sounds like a bargain, eh? But honestly, it's not worth doing if you guys aren't on board. So please let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments. Also, if you would like to ask a question for the next Q&A session, then let me know in the comments by marking it as Q&A and I'll choose the most asked or the most weird ones.
So we're nearly done here, friends. Some of you big-hearted souls keep asking me for my address so that you can send me all tools and things that you have no need for. However, I'm always reluctant to accept such wonderful gestures as I think it would be better for you to sell them and make a bit of extra cheese for yourselves. The rise in the cost of living is getting scary and I hear some really heartbreaking stories of people having to decide between heating and eating. And this is happening in the UK, so just imagine what is happening in poorer countries. So please, instead of offering your gifts to me, sell them and support your local food banks and your local communities. And if you have a bit more to spare, then support our wider community around the world. So I hope you've enjoyed this one and found it useful. Thank you all for chilling out with me and please like, share and subscribe to support this channel and future content. It really helps. So until next time folks, please look after yourselves and look after one another. Support your local food banks. Peace, love and blessings to you all. And if the Almighty wills, I'll see you on the next one. Tarara bit.